Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. We are continuing Elmer's engine number two. And what we're going to work on today are the cranks and possibly the flywheel, which is on the other page. These are relatively straightforward operations. We just need to turn the diameter and drill a couple holes. So let's head over to the lathe and we'll get working. All right, the stock we're going to be using today for the cranks and the flywheel is 304 stainless steel. I'm using 304 stainless because I like working with it. It is a pretty free machining stainless. Uh, typically, uh, stainless is pretty difficult to work with uh, in terms of machining. However, 304 stainless is pretty free machining. Um, I like to consider it the lead alloy or 12L14 of stainless. It, of course, isn't as easy as that, but um, it is still fairly easy. Here's a piece that I uh, faced off a while back. As you can see it just makes a beautiful finish as long as you have the right insert. Uh, this insert that I'm using is from Shars. Uh, it's specifically made for stainless. I of course use it for other metals as well but as I said it's made for stainless. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this down to three quarters of an inch and then we're going to drill and ream an eighth inch hole in the center for the crankshaft. And then we're going to do offset uh, drilling to do the crank pins. All right, next we're going to go ahead and drill and ream for an eighth inch hole for the crankshaft. And now we're going to use the grooving tool to part off the crank discs. I've already have the edge of the tool set to the end of the work. Now we're going to move over 3 16 of an inch. Uh, actually a little bit more than that so I can do a facing pass on the other side. And we'll part them off. All right, now that we got the crank disc cut out, I've got the other one sitting on the bench. We need to trim them down to their final length, which is a 3 16 of an inch. And to do that, we're gonna use a collet that I made when I built this engine a couple of years ago. I just drilled it out and counterboard it to the 3 quarters of an inch to accept the, the crank disc, and then cut a slit along the side 
so that when you clamp this down in the three jaw, the collet will clamp down on the crank disc and hold it in place. Now we do need to be able to take this out, measure it, and then put it back in. And in order to put it back in in the same spot, I made this backstop, which is held in with the Morris taper collet, and then the three jaw chuck will go over it. So when we put this in, it will butt up against that. Then we'll be able to take it out and then put it back in in the exact same spot. All right, for the next part, we need to drill an offset hole for the crank pin. And that offset hole is a quarter of an inch off of center. And to do that, we're gonna use the offset drilling jig that I made in a previous video. I'll leave a link to that in the description and up on your screen. And the way this works is you just slip the disc in there and it slip, sits flush with the surface and then it's held in by a set screw. And then that is the completed crank disc. The last thing I'm gonna do off camera is drill a hole and tap for a set screw to hold this to the crankshaft. And right, next we're gonna work on the flywheel. There's really nothing interesting about it, so I'm just gonna do it. With those bits completed, I'm going to do some things off camera. I'm going to make the crankshaft, the crank pins, and the pivot shaft. I'm going to do those off camera. Then in the next video, we're going to do a little bit of finish work. We're going to put it together and we're going to run it. That'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.